Hey guys, all right, let's go ahead and talk about uh, computing limits algebraically with piecewise functions. So uh, if you remember from your pre-calculus days, a piecewise function is just a function that's literally defined in pieces. So f of x here uh, is equal to x plus 2 if x is less than or equal to 6, and it's equal to x squared minus 1 if x is bigger than 6, all right? So um, when we do limits with these, it's pretty much still direct substitution, but uh, because it's defined in pieces, uh, we have to sometimes worry about subtle details. For example, in part A here, we're taking the limit as x goes to 6 from the left of f of x. So 6 is a value of x where the function splits into two pieces here. So we need to be careful about what we're doing here. So the trick to remember is that um, this is the one-sided limit here. So x is coming into 6 from the left. Because x comes into 6 from the left, x is always less than 6. So if we want to draw a number line real quick, um, here's a number line. Here's 6, okay? x is coming into 6 from the left, so x comes in this way here, all right? And because x comes in from the left, x is always less than 6. So uh, x comes into 6 from the left, that means that x is always less than 6, all right? And it's never larger than 6, it's never equal to 6. So that tells us which piece we could use of the piecewise function here. So because x is always less than 6, um, we can just look at the first piece here, because the second piece doesn't matter, because that corresponds to x being larger than 6, and that's irrelevant for this left-hand limit here. So this is actually going to equal the limit as x approaches 6 from the left of just the first piece, which is x plus 2. All right. So now we can just do straight-up direct substitution, uh, and that's going to equal 6 plus 2, which of course is 8. Okay. So the first thing we did is uh, we looked, okay, is 6 a point where the function breaks into pieces? Yes, it is. So now we see, okay, uh, is it a left or a right-hand limit? Yeah, it's a left-hand limit. So because it's a left-hand limit, x comes into 6 from the left, which means x is always less than 6. Since x is always less than 6, we're only going to look at this piece here, right? And we're going to ignore the second piece. So then uh, we can rewrite the limit as this. And now, for the direct substitution part, the fact that it's one-sided doesn't matter at all. Okay? We, just, we still take the 6 and just put it in here. Uh, and then we end up with 8. So that's part A. Uh, part B, now we have the limit as x approaches 6 from the right of f of x. Okay? So here, here's the um, first thing we look at is 6, a, a point where the function breaks into pieces. Yes, it is. Okay? Now, is it a left or a right-hand limit? Yeah, it's a right-hand limit. So, uh, x comes into 6 from the right. So, if we draw a number line again, here's a number line. Uh, we'll put 6 over here. If x comes into 6 from the right, uh, what does that mean about x? How, how, how does it relate to 6? Well, x comes into 6 from the right, meaning x is always larger than 6. Okay, if x is coming in from this direction, uh, x has to be bigger than 6. So, x coming into 6 from the right that means that x is larger than 6. Right? And that's helpful to us because now we know that we can ignore the first piece of f of x here. Because if x comes into 6 from the right, x is bigger than 6, which means the only piece we need to look at is the second piece here. All right? So let's go ahead and do that. So it's pretty, much, uh, it's pretty similar to part a, but now we're just going to use the other piece of the function because x comes into 6 from the right. So this equals limit as x approaches 6 from the right of the second piece, which is x squared minus 1. All right, and now we can do direct substitution. Uh, and now the fact that it's a one-sided limit doesn't matter anymore. So we're just going to take the 6, put it into here, and we get 6 squared minus 1. 6 squared is 36, minus 1 is 35. All right. So that's part B. All right, so part C. Um, part C is limit as x approaches 6 of f of x. So now this is the two-sided limit. Notice there's no minus or plus here. Uh, we already did both of those. All right, but here, um, first thing we do, we see, okay, is 6 a point where the function breaks into pieces? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, is it a left or a right-hand limit? No, it's not. Okay. Um, now, if you're doing a two-sided limit at a point where the function breaks into pieces, uh, in order to do that, you have to do both of the one-sided limits first. Luckily for us, we already did that in part A and B. All right, so we'll have, uh, why do we need to do those first? How does that help us? 
Well, remember, um, when does this limit exist? It exists if both of the one-sided limits exist and equal the same thing, all right? So is that true in this case? Um, the left-hand limit, it exists and it equals 8. The right-hand limit, it exists and it equals 35, all right? So they both exist, but they don't equal the same thing. And uh, if they don't equal the same thing, then the two-sided limit doesn't exist. So that's part C. Part D, limit as x approaches negative 9 from the left of f of x. First thing we look at is negative 9, a point where the function breaks into pieces. No, it's not. Okay, uh, That's kind of good. That's good. So now we go back here. Negative 9, um, which piece of the function does that correspond to? Negative 9, is that less than or equal to 6? Yes, it is. So that's going to correspond to this piece here, just the first piece. Um, so we can ignore the second piece here and only focus on the first. So this is actually going to equal uh, the limit as x approaches negative 9 from the left of just the first piece of f of x, which was x plus 2, right? All right, so now this is just straight up direct substitution. Uh, we're going to take negative 9 and put it into here. The fact that we're coming in from the left doesn't matter at all. Okay, if this were uh, a right-hand limit or a two-sided limit, it would still be the same thing. Just take negative 9, directly substitute it into this expression here for x. So we end up with negative 9 plus 2, which is negative 7. And that's the answer to part D, negative 7. All right, so that's that.